Hello, today we're going to talk about several theorems that relate to proportionality in triangles. So the first one, I want you to envision if a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides. So first let's draw a picture of what that looks like. So draw a triangle, maybe something kind of like this. And then draw a line that's parallel on the interior, parallel to this side on the end and draw two little marks showing that these are parallel. We'll call this triangle SQTUR. Okay, so if a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, so talking about these two sides, then it divides the two sides proportionally. So what that means with terminology would be if TU is parallel to QS, then RT over TQ, let's look at where that is real quick. So RT is right here, and then TQ is right here. So this side here compares to this side the same way that RU, so see this longer side here, compares to US. So these two go together, and these two go together. So you can set up a proportion in order to find missing sides. Okay, then the converse of that, sort of like the opposite of that, let's draw one more triangle. I'm just go ahead and use the same letters, S, Q, and draw another line that is parallel. T, U, R. Okay, so if a line divides two sides of a triangle proportionally, then it is parallel to the third side. So this time we're not given that it's parallel, we're given that the proportions work. And we're just going to list those same proportions that we just talked about. Then you can conclude that TU is parallel to QS. All right, so let's just use an example of this. What's the length of RQ? So RQ, we're going to put maybe a little X here to represent that is what we're looking for. And we're given that these two lines are parallel, and you can see that it's in a triangle. So we can set this up as saying, well, x compares to 9. So this part here compares to this part here. The same way that 4 compares to 6. Then once you set it up, you can cross multiply. So we get 6x equals 9 times 4. 9 times 4 is 36. Then divide both sides by 6. And you end up with x equals 6. All right, let's look at the next one. So what these all have in common is that pretty much all of them represent relationships that are proportional. And so just how you set up the proportions is just a little bit different with each one. So this one has three parallel lines. And then there's two transversals going through like this. And we're going to have lots of very, lots of vertices here. So we've got U, W, Y, and we'll call this line L, this line M, and then V, X, and Z. These are all points where they intersect. Okay, and it says if three parallel lines intersect two transversals, then they divide the transversals proportionally. So U, W would compare to WY, so let's look at where those are. UW would compare to WY right next to it, the same way that VX compares to XZ. I just realized my V's and U's kind of look alike, so I'm going to make that a little more defined. Okay. And so let's set this up. With the real numbers, it's a little easier to see. All right, so this time it says find the length of BD. It's a little hard to see where we're looking, but it is right here. We'll call this X. And we're going to say X. I usually just like to start off with the one that I'm looking for. So X compares to 30, so the one right next to it. The same way that, take the one across from it on top. The same way that 16 compares to 40. And once again, we're going to cross multiply to get 40X equals 16 times 30, which multiplies to 480. Divide both sides by 40. 
and we get x equals 12. All right, last theorem. And once again, it's going to have to do with some proportions. And this time we're given a triangle. And it says, if a ray bisects an angle of a triangle. So first let's draw kind of a standard triangle. And we'll call it ABC. And we'll have this ray going right down the center. Just draw it the best that you can. We'll call this point D. And what we're given is that since the ray bisects the angle, we know that this angle is congruent to this angle. It says then it divides the opposite sides into segments whose lengths are proportional to the lengths of the other two sides. So let's look at what that means. Which really it means that when you compare AD to DB, so AD is right here, DB is right here, and that compares the same way to CA over CB. CA is here, and then CB is here. So it's like take the two um, the sides where they're being divided, right? Compare those, and then you want to compare these sides. They're adjacent to them, just in the same order. Okay, so let's do an example of that. Okay, so we're going to say that, oh, this time we're already given our variable. So we're looking for the length of TU. And we're going to say, well, that one compares to 14, because those are both on the end here, right? The same way that, and just start with the same, so think of this as a triangle that they go together. So since we have x on top, we're going to put 48 on top. And then 24 is a part of this triangle. So 48 matches with 24. All right, now let's solve our proportion. So we get 24x equals 48 times 14. And that simplifies to 672. Divide both sides by 24. And we'll end up with 28. All right, that's 